trying to get out of my tent for some reason. Good morning, everybody. Today is day 29. Just getting started. It's uh, 6.15 a.m. Uh, slept well last night, but for some reason I didn't want to get out of my tent this morning. Um, I'm out of water, so I've got about five, just a little over five miles to the first water. Not a big deal. And then after that, I've got a pick my poison. I could either do 10 miles to the next water source and walk a mile off trail and a mile back, uphill and downhill, or I've got 20 miles. I could just do 20 miles and get water on the trail. Here's some more wind turbines. So pretty much the uh, last few miles of yesterday and today we're walking on this uh washed out road which is uh kind of a pain in the ass in some places because it's covered with rocks it's not really a road uh that most cars can drive on these are the public lands roads or the blm this is i'm on blm land now which uh, stands for bureau of land management it's public lands that anyone can use for anything pretty much uh, camping, fishing, hunting, dirt biking. Um, these are the types of roads that are on these lands. They're, they're often numbered, uh, but they're not roads you can drive on unless you have a high clearance vehicle. Oh, and uh, today's Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day, Mom. I don't have service, but if I do, I'll send you a text or give you a call. I stopped at this uh, spring here, I'm about five, uh, a little more than five miles in, 5.2 or something. There's a loud frog in there making a lot of noise. So, yeah, I just had to get a, uh, I had to have a quick breakfast because I didn't eat anything before I left. I think I had a few spoonfuls of that rice and beans I was left over from last night. Um, yeah, I needed to get some food in me and uh, I gotta get some water and I think I have about a 20 mile, 20 mile carry from here on. So I'm gonna do at least 25 miles today and um, hear the frog. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna move on in a few minutes. So um, that's that. All right, I took a stop for about a half hour, which is longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to eat. Some food because I didn't eat my left. Take off my rain pants and then I sat there and drank a liter of water uh, with some electrolytes. That way I don't have to carry as much. So I've got about 20 miles to the next water, um, which will be 25 miles for the day, and I'll decide if I want to stay there or do more miles. I'm gonna do at least 25, maybe 30. We'll see how I feel. I'm not sure what happened, but somehow I veered off the trail. I didn't notice a junction anywhere. And I've been bushwhacking on this side trail. It's on the uh, Far Out app. It's a green dotted line. So it's a, I guess somewhat of a trail, but not really uh, groomed. So I'm trying to follow it back to the PCT. Don't know how that happened, but not a big deal. I'll be, I'm almost back on trail. I've just been kind of walking through a lot of crap the past mile or so. I think there's a trail down there. Well, that was cool. I'm walking uh, down the trail and coming in the opposite direction. I see this girl walking. She's like, hey, I know you. And it was uh, a trail angel patchouli from a few weeks back. Uh, I think it was before we got into... Uh, before we stay at the Joshua Tree Inn, it's in one of the earlier videos. She was, she had a box truck and providing trail magic for people, and we talked to her for a bit. But she's just, she's hiking, uh, she's, she's section hiking, going northbound, and then she's going to go back and 
uh, I guess go back to Kennedy Meadows and do the Sierra. So that was pretty cool. I really need to shave. I was gonna do another two miles before lunch, but I found this really cool shaded spot, some soft grass under these trees. So I'm gonna have some lunch here, uh, about 13 miles in for the day. I've got another, I think 12 to get to the water. So that'll be 25. I think I'll, I think I'll keep it at 25. Um, maybe do a few more miles, but I'm thinking that uh, that water source is, uh, Gonna be where I camp or close by it. So uh, nothing uh, eventful today. I'm just uh, doing the hike and um, gonna have some lunch. All right, all right. What's up, everybody? It's about twelve noon. I just took a little half hour lunch break. I was gonna wait a few more miles, but I found this really awesome spot in the shade. So um, got a little recharge. I'm going to do another thirteen miles to a. Uh, water source, I think it's a spring, and that'll be 25, and I'll probably camp around there. Um, if I fill up to it, I'll do a few more miles, but I'm not in a rush, as I said. So, um, unfortunately, I only have a liter of water, <laughs> so I gotta make that last another 12 miles, which shouldn't be a problem. I just uh, drank a liter with some electrolytes. So, um, yeah, another 12 miles. I'm gonna try to knock this out in, uh, about four hours, so catch up to you in a bit. Her left, her left, her left, right, left. Her left, her left, her left, right, left. got like a quarter of a liter of water left and probably four and a half, four to four and a half miles to the spring. I am just parched, dying of thirst. Don't ever do 20 miles with two liters of water. I just did 600 miles, woo! There's no mile marker though. Uh, maybe there's one coming up. But um, yeah, day 29, hit the 600 mile mark. Um, a little less than three more to go for the day. I am beat, uh, I'm shot, I'm thirsty. 600 miles. Uh, I've never been so happy to see that sign. <clears throat> hey, what's up everybody? End of day 29, I did 25 miles today. I finally made it to the spring. Um, I was really thirsty. Um, <laughs> And I uh, really tired by the time I got there, but um, set up camp in this cool spot and um, right near the spring. So uh, I have water tonight and tomorrow morning, and um, that's about it. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Oh, good morning, everybody. Today's day 30. Uh, passed the 600 mile mark yesterday. Um, today is the first time that. The other hikers around me were packed up before me. <laughs> it's about 10 to 6. I'm going to hit the trail in a minute. Um, had a good night's sleep. I didn't say much before sleep because uh, there were other hikers around and uh, trying to go to sleep, so I didn't want to be too loud. But uh, I'm going to try to do 25 miles today. And um, I should be at Ridcrest late tomorrow, so I might either get a ride then depending on what time I get there, or I might just sleep near the trailhead and catch a ride early Wednesday morning, get into resupply. So um, that's it for now. I'll see you on the trail. Nothing like starting the day off with a little climb to get the blood flowing. So I've got water for the next 10 miles. Um, and then there was like a 40 mile 
stretch of no water, which would have sucked because I don't have the capacity to carry that. But apparently now there's a couple of water caches set up in that section, so water shouldn't be a problem. Speaking of water, I was so thirsty when I got to camp last night. I drank like three liters by the time I went to bed. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I didn't film this yesterday, but there was a ton of blowdowns uh, coming up to where I camped. There was a, been a lot in this section, so it kind of slows you down a bit. This is a blowdown right here, if you don't know. It's a tree that has been blown down on the trail. I'm going over this one. Let's see what the trail brings today, shall we? This last section of the desert, it's been a little more difficult uh, in that there's just, uh, not that it's difficult, but there's been some longer water carries and Earlier on in the desert, there were sections where you'd be walking flat for like an entire day or two. That doesn't exist anymore. It's a lot more up and down, up and down. Um, and just put some steeper climbs. Um, you know, some of them that last a few miles that are just steeper than the previous uh, part of the desert, at least in my opinion. So, and I've got just about less than 100 miles to go before the Sierra. So I think there's gonna be a lot more elevation gain in this next section. So here's a funny story. Hiking yesterday, toward the end of the day, had about five miles left and I was really tired coming up this huge climb. I see this dude just sitting on a rock, leaning back, reading a book. And I'm like, Kimbo, holy shit. And I walked right up to him. I'm like, dude, what happened? You were like three days behind me and just sitting there smiling i walked right up to the guy and he starts speaking with a british accent <laughs> and it obviously wasn't kimbo but it looks just like him i'm like holy crap uh so i he camped uh near me last night and uh he i guess i forget his trail name but uh cool cat well the scenery has definitely been very beautiful in this section That's for sure. So I hear there's a really good Chinese buffet in Ridgecrest, all you can eat. Uh, I had the one in Tehachapi, it was kind of, it wasn't that good. I mean, it was cheap, you know, but it really wasn't that good. So I heard this one's much better. So I'm already looking forward to town food. I got two days. So uh, I've gotten a lot of messages from friends of mine via text, via, you know, comments on my social media and YouTube that they're really enjoying uh, videos and they've been caught up watching them and they're waiting for more. And I really appreciate that because um, it's because of your positive words and, and your encouragement. I'm getting a lot of encouraging texts from people, you know, and uh, that's helping me through this, you know, um, I want to thank all of you. And I didn't do this, uh, I didn't start this YouTube channel to make money or to get famous or whatever. Um, I just did it to hopefully motivate people or inspire people, I should say, to get out and do something outrageous and outside of your comfort zone. And in turn, you all have been inspiring me to keep going. So thank you for that. I love you all, miss you all. And uh, I'll see you when I get back. about seven miles in it's gonna get some water at this spring here uh i didn't realize it was this far off the trail it's probably like two tenths of a mile off trail downhill so i gotta walk uphill whatever so i have another i think 10 miles after this is another water source so i'm gonna actually I need to eat some food too because i had a little bit of food before i left and now i'm starving so i'm gonna take a 10 minute break here well i was pretty hungry just scarfed down 
a bunch of food and some trail mix, some nuts, whatnot. So uh, it took a, about 15 minutes there. Um, there was a couple of pit toilets in the area. I had to steal some toilet paper, just a little bit, because I'm running low. So uh, there's a lot there that I left. Uh, anyway, so I got another seven miles to the next water source. Um, that is the water cache, and I'll probably sit there and have lunch. I left camp this morning. I only had about 400 calories of food. I had a couple of snacks, and I think I just ate about a thousand calories back there by the by the spring. I just wolfed food down. I was starving, and it's weird because my hunger has kicked up in the past week or so. But yesterday and the day before, I didn't eat that much on the trail. I wasn't that hungry for dinner or for lunch or dinner. Um, and maybe why I was a bit sluggish, but, you know, I don't eat unless I'm hungry. But I find on this hike, man, if you don't, you got to eat. Like, if you don't eat, like, you just, like, sluggish and get mood swings. And I feel like I just need to plow down calories just to you know, give me energy to hike. Um, so that was weird that I wasn't that hungry yesterday, the day before, but I chowed down last night at camp and uh, just now, so um, I'm definitely gonna have a big lunch. Oh, and electrolytes too. You gotta have electrolytes. It makes a huge difference. I've been taking uh, two packets a day, at least. Usually two, sometimes three. Sometimes I'll have one at camp at night, but it definitely makes a huge difference. So not just water, you need the electrolytes, which I don't ever take normally, but um, it makes a huge difference in your energy level. So I just saw this guy, uh, that I, was at the campsite last night. He was like hiding away in the bushes, taking a break. I'm like, you're right, man? He's like, oh, I got down to the sun. It's hot. I'm like, hot? I'm like, it's like, not even, it's like 70 degrees. Maybe 68, 69? Like, oh, it's hot, man. I'm like, and then the other day, I ran to this girl who said she got heat stroke coming off of one of the mountains, and it was like 72 degrees. She said, I'm like, how are you getting heat stroke at 70 degrees? So these people are complaining that it's hot. I told this dude, I'm like, what are you gonna do in two months when you get to Northern California and it's like 95, 100 degrees? He's like, oh my god, I might quit. And he's, I guess he's from Lithuania. He said, this is hot for him. But it's barely 70 degrees out and people are complaining about heat now. I don't know what they're going to do later on on the hike. See, in Florida, 70 degrees is the dividing line between wearing a sweater or not. Because if it's leaking, you got to deal with letting leak out or whatever. Oh, so much better. You got to take it off. Million times better. This hike was. Go ahead. Well, it's leaking. Yeah, to let it out. Go ahead and just let it out. Oh, what's up? I just did. Uh, well, I just took a nice hour lunch break near this water cache on the road here. Thank God someone brought that water out. Um, whoever did, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I did 14 miles already before I stopped for lunch. Had some food, drank a lot of water, and now I've got another three liters on me. And uh, there's about 15 miles to the next water cache. Days are getting warmer, the climbs are getting longer, and the water is becoming more scarce. The desert will test you, that's for sure. All right, kids, it looks like I'm going to push on and uh, head to the water cache. Um, it's in like 7.4 7 miles, so um, not that much further. Another few hours. Uh, so, um, yeah, probably two, two hours plus. So I'm going to do that. That way I can stay by water, and then there's no water until I get off the trail at Ridgecrest. It's supposed to be 20 miles after that, so... Uh, that's why I'm going to stay near the cache. Climbing up this last stretch, it's just all uphill. That's it. Every day, at the end of the day, for some reason, 
the last bit of trail is no matter where I'm going is all uphill. So this is a 700 foot climb, which I'm, um, I don't know how far into it I am, but um, I got another four point something miles to get to uh, the water cache where I'm gonna uh, stop for the day. So look at that view though. Day 30 to an end, made it 29 miles today, made it to the water cache, um, not in a good mood, my mattress has a hole in it, so now I have to sleep on the fucking hard ground tonight, I'm kind of pissed off, it just happened now, so I'm going to have to stop in Ridgecrest and stay overnight and get a room, because my knee is not uh, healing, um, I took the bandage off now and washed it, and it's just not healing, um, it doesn't hurt, but it looks pretty gross. Uh, I gotta fix my mattress. I need to shave because it's really annoying me. And um, yeah, so I'm probably gonna get to Ridgecrest uh, tomorrow in the afternoon, and I'm I'm gonna have to get a room and take care of all this stuff. So um, sorry, just slightly annoyed right now, and um, actually very annoyed because I don't know how I'm gonna sleep tonight. But anyway, day 30, 29 miles, and I'll catch up to you tomorrow. Peace out.